Hi, my name is Rida El Sai and I live in London. I never expected to be developing an EdTech gaming studio, but um, here I am looking for funding now. Oh, this looks good. Gaming. Brain spark, so a game to test your brain. Who's going to do it? Tinker? I, I need to test my brain. Recharge. I could have easily have been a girl left in the village in Pakistan, which is where my parents came from. If they hadn't migrated to the UK and really focused on us getting an education, I don't think I'd be here today. And I just feel that if I have certain opportunities, I have to really leverage those for the greater good. That's something that's really important to me. Hello, Dragons. Um, my name is Rida El Sai. I'm the founder of BrainSpark Games. I'm looking for £10,000 for 1% equity. I started the company because I literally couldn't get my kids to stop gaming. I don't know if any of you have had this problem, but um, when I was helping my son with his 11 plus exams a few years ago, it occurred to me that if millions of children globally are playing mobile games, then why are we not disseminating educational content through games? We've condensed 12 weeks of term time learning into just a few hours of fun, fast gameplay. Our games are designed for girls and boys to be played as part of a mainstream lesson plan, an after-school activity, or on the go if you're traveling or something like that. We've playtested our games with over 1,800 children, parents, and teachers, and developed a really strong product market fit. And I hope that you will consider joining us on that journey. So if I could ask one of the dragons to um, have a demo, maybe with our game. Tuka, go on. Um, go on. Oh. on. Come on, it'll be fun. They're setting me up. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what they're doing. A digital platform which aims to channel children's passion for gaming into a love of learning is the offering from Radar El Sai. If you just scroll through the carousel, that gives you a sense of all the different subjects, physics, math, math languages. Yeah. So these are a lot of the games that are currently in development. So what we've done with the climate game is we've researched 14 core subjects that explain to children the causes of climate change. So okay. we're going to industrialization. Clean up. Yep. Ridar is seeking £10,000 in exchange for 1% of her business. So we always have exploration mode and I've you never can done this. click I've to the portal right. and now you've got to find your way to the portal to build an, a sustainable city. So if you use the navigation button here, you can explore. So I'll probably don't want to walk around oh, the not middle, on the road. You know, not on the road. On the, on the path, path too. Just don't want to get run over. He's lost already. Tuka Suleiman may be struggling to get his bearings. <laughs> I give up. You did really well. But will this combination of technology and teaching have the dragons heading straight for their pockets? Stephen Bartlett is first to find out more. Rida, really interesting. What's your um, professional background? So I'm a qualified barrister. I've had a number of businesses in the creative industries. And prior to starting this three, four years ago, I worked as a portfolio manager in culture, heritage, tech, and education-led regeneration with government in the UK and the Middle East. Uh, are you focused on this business now, or are you doing yeah, something Yeah, yeah. I mean, I resigned from a very well-paid job that I absolutely loved um, in August 21, because I realized that I either had to scale and grow this and commit full time or stop. Um, so I've been full time since. So funding wise, how have you funded this business? So I've put in over £470,000 of my own money for my oh, salary oh. and my savings. And are you the only investor in the business? So actually we've just uh, closed around. We've just raised 1.4 million. We raised 700,000 pounds through what I call super angels, predominantly from the games industry. And then we secured our seventh Innovate UK grant for 700,000. So they match funded the investment. How are you marketing this? Because it sounds like this is for schools. By, by going into schools and doing play testing, by going to public spaces, um, by doing a bit of social media marketing. Okay. I have a question about the, the business model, which is how you intend to make money, because it's pretty difficult to make money from schools. Yeah, it is. So that's why we're at the intersection of gaming and education. So our business model ensures that the games are free for children, the end beneficiary, but we charge um, uh, £20 per year for a turbo GCSE game. Um, we're also... Are you charging £20 a year too? Um, the client will be the parent. 
um, for the GCSEs because where they buy revision textbooks, exam questions, that sort of thing, this is a supplemental tool. And then we are, we've just uh, finished building our, our Creator Spark, which was funded by £350,000 Innovate Smart Grant. And the USP around that is that it allows educators to go in and track how well uh, a, a player is doing. So that subscription is being sold to schools. Do you know what my concern is? My concern is there's been a lot of grants, but is there any evidence of a business model here? Yeah, I, th I think it's a very valid concern. We're pre-revenue and we have been in two years of very deep R&D and we now need to pivot and really start selling our subscriptions. And with the games industry, it is slightly different in that the production cycle does take longer, but when you release, it can be explosive. So this is a different business model. A really dear friend of mine um, has a, it heads up one of the gaming teams in um, Sony, and she describes this. We just develop and develop and develop and yeah. develop, and who knows why? Suddenly, one of those games yeah. absolutely yeah. blows up, and the others just never see the light of day. So, at what point do you think this is going to go live? So we're working on the bundle of five games on the core platform by winter, but we are also releasing the games separately as standalone subjects. So we will release Climate Spark just as a single standalone app in the App Store, but it will be exactly the same content as will be on the, the whole platform as well. Okay, I'm glad I'm unpicking this because this is becoming a little bit clearer. So over here, you've got the big platform with a load of topics on it, yeah. and that you're going to sell into education. Yeah, primarily local authorities and schools and teachers and the, and the kids will be beneficial. And over here, you've got lots of individual topics that are going to be on the App Store. And if you're, if you're a parent and you want your child to get familiar with climate change, you're going to download, download. Have I got it? You absolutely have. OK, that's it. That, thank you. Rita, hi. Um, do you know my background in this, in this market? I do. OK. Well, to a degree. I just want to explain it. Uh, I've got a a, quite a huge level of humility, so, but I'm explaining it because I think you need to know. The, the irony of saying I've got a huge level yeah. of humility, that's quite and, ironic. And, and, and that's why also I'm putting it out there because there's no other dragon that has the background <laughs> in this sector than me. Um, in fact, I was the lead advisor in government about this subject. And I created Britain's first enterprise entrepreneurship qualification as well, um, teaching young people enterprise and education. The software that we use, that we've developed, I could class it as a game because they do go into certain elements of learning. It's all driven by technology, but I do this through a charity. And we've struggled to get schools to pay. We've struggled to get even, would you believe, parents to pay. And we've ended up paying because we think it's important. Yeah, this I mean, that's why, why I've just is, got on with it and done it I myself. I know, and this so. is why I'm so... I so admire you. I thank really you. do. I think you're a leading light in this. Thank you um, very much. But the only way that this can happen is in an embedment in a national curriculum. But I can tell you, I've been doing this since 2009, and I have been relentless. And I have still not succeeded in embedding it in the national curriculum. And I'm talking about enterprise and uh, yeah. entrepreneurship, by the way. And I wouldn't say give up, but I think it's it's really tough. So for that reason, I'm out. OK. Thank you. So um, I have a, a quite an interesting background in gaming. In fact, I actually think my business was built on the success of us launching a game. And we went on to do another game, which didn't do as well, to Deborah's point, that it is yeah. hit and miss. Yeah. And it's hard to know because the, yeah. the me mechanics of that game were identical. and. As an investment, there's something missing, and it's, it is that commercialization. Um, there's a possibility, but that is heavily based on fortune and hitting zeitgeist. There's just too many question marks in my head for how we how we get there. But I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish okay. you the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, um, you're good. Thank you and you're doing an important thing. Which bits of that sound like something that I wouldn't want to be involved in? So I'm involved with a business that sells into 6,000 schools um, already. 
And I know very well the um, founder of Mumsnet, <laughs> who gives you a great network in terms of reaching yep. out. And I know this would be yep. right up Esther. Why wouldn't it be? You know, she wants to do good things. So yes, I'm going to offer you, I'm going to offer you all of the money. I'm going to offer you the £10,000 um, for the ask. So for 1% of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. I'll tell you what I think, Rida. Okay. I think you've got something here. Because I am absolutely in that space you talk about. My kids are seven and ten, and I can understand as a parent why I would be encouraging them to use this. And actually, I think your chance of success is far greater if you do have a dragon on board. Yeah. Because you do need a lot of help with that commercialization. Right. Yeah. But you've got real vision and purpose, and I have that shared vision and purpose that you do. So I'm going to make you an offer. For the wow, £10,000 you so you've, you've offered, for the 1%, I'll join you on thank this journey. Thank you. Um, look, you're, you're very credible. You put up £470,000 of your own money. You've given up a very lucrative job. And I respect you for that. Thank you. You know? And I think... I'm sure you've had sleepless nights. I have. Look, I, I do admire you and I Thank respect you, you a lot, and, but I can't do it for 1%. What, what I can do is talk about giving you some office space for six months. You'd be sitting right next to my office, so on a constant input basis, bouncing off ideas. So I would give you the whole 10,000, but I want 5%. And for that, I think I would give you more time than I would normally give anybody else. Okay. Five percent. Five percent. Um, so I just really want to thank you all for your feedback. And I really would love to have all three of the dragons, if that's at all possible. Um, and I wonder to if there's if there's any way that you would consider the 1% rather than the 5% for the £10,000, because I do feel it's a really fair offer to... It is a, it is a fair offer. If, if I'm going to be a, a semi-passive investor, and you've got two great offers here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to, to say, and, and uh, all due respect, they can both deliver, um, you know, but you won't see them every day. It's a slight difference. That's what I'm offering. Um, so I'd really like to accept both offers. If you would consider both uh, investing 10,000 each and taking 1% each. Absolutely. If Tuka would consider doing the same. Why not? <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Well done. Oh, thank you. Great Great a right result for Ridar. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Who departs with £30,000. How to slay a dragon. Off the ray. And the backing of a trio of dragons. One of whom was convinced into breaking his number one rule in the den. I couldn't say that. You couldn't say no. That's your new slogan. I do get out of bed for 1%. No, like she's broken the curse. But you know something? She's put a lot of her own money into this, and I admire what she's doing. I'm feeling relieved and over the moon. I did not expect this result at all. But I'm really, really excited to see how quickly we can scale and grow now.